Hello there, I'm Dave Dickens. Now, for the Great Guitar Build Off 2021, I'm going to be building a semi-acoustic guitar with electric pickups concealed within the body. So this is going to be a bit of a challenge for me. So why don't you come and join me? Let's get going. In this episode, I'm going to be making the neck of the guitar. And for that, I'm going to be making a compound neck using this Van Col as a dark timber, Sycamore whoops, as the light timber, and the fretboard is going to be my favourite, Olive. So I want to do something a little bit different with the uh, the neck so I've sketched it out on a piece of paper okay with the lawnmower going in the background I just want to walk you through my idea for the neck uh, I want a compound neck um, I'm going to have sycamore on the sides of the guitar so I want sycamore on the sides of the neck and a van col in the center so a dykes a nice dark strip in the center but I want the a van col to to come out to the the full width of the neck at the point which I'm going to create a scarf joint to join the headstock because the headstock will be a van col as well. This is going to be quite a fiddly joint so the first thing I'm going to do is make a template out of plywood. Now I'm marking the template on the van col. I've only sanded one side of this template, so I've just turned it over. I think I may have a change of plan here. I was going to use my template to mark out the sycamore but I think what I'm going to do is get this all sanded nice and smooth and then use this as the template to cut the sycamore after that. I think that would make more sense. a bit of sand in there but um, I've got these sides nice and smooth now and hopefully nice and flat so I'm going to use this central piece as the template for the uh, two sycamore pieces on the side uh, and then it's uh, quite a bit more sanding and leveling I think I'll have a go with the number seven plane first so I can get the side really flat. I think I'm going against the grain. Let's turn it around and have a look. I have a tendency to push down too hard on this side of the wood when I'm planing and so as a consequence I don't end up with a flat piece of wood so I'm going to mark that and just watch myself on this edge. Now to introduce you to my cunning plan. I've 
cut this out on the bandsaw and I've leveled it with a plane and smoothed the curve to a certain extent with some sandpaper. What I'm going to do now is take a strip of sandpaper and super glue and masking tape it into there and then I'm going to use that to shape this side piece. I've clamped in this piece of wood to act as a stop to uh, help me guide the, uh, the top here over the sandpaper and stay in the right place. Now I know you're going to say, well hang on a second, the thickness of this paper is going to offset the way you shape that. What I'm going to do is put a thin layer of veneer in there which will hopefully match the thickness of this paper. Now I've been at, at this for quite a while now and I'm noticing I'm, I'm getting scratch marks all over this part now as well as all over there. So what I think I'm going to do is change this to a finer paper, 120, and um, just carry on a little bit longer. Okay, I've been at this for a couple of hours now and I think I've got it as good as I'm going to get it, to be perfectly honest with you. So um, any gaps are going to have to be uh, filled in with dust and glue, I think. So now I need to select some veneer to go between these two pieces. I've got a bundle of 12 um, long pieces of veneer from a company called Oakdale Crafts and uh, they're really nice. So there's a real selection here, um, some walnuts and maple and um, including this uh, grey bird's eye maple which is rather interesting and some ash and uh, Zebrano, yeah, a nice selection of uh, a nice selection of woods here. It's going to be too too dark. We've got something that's really much lighter than the two of them. Actually, that's rather nice. I rather like that. I'm going to do the glue up with this clamping fixture, which is just literally a board with some feet on it which allow, allows me to get the uh, clamps underneath. Uh, I've, I'm using the off cut from this neck piece on the back just to, to keep the whole thing steady. Okay, so there's nothing else I can do tonight. I've got this side of the neck glued up, so I'm going to leave it and have a look at it in the morning. I'm going to use some of this olive for the fretboard, and I've identified a piece which sort of runs off at an angle there, uh, which has got some nice grain on it. So I'm just going to mark it up with a stronger pencil here. So I've got this strip here which has got some nice figuring in it and I think it's going to look really good as a fretboard. Well I've got two fretboards out of that piece of wood. I love the figuring on that, that looks really good. I've thickened it to just over 7mm, so I'm now going to put those to one side and just let them settle. Okay, one side's done now, I'm going to cut the other side. using this olive as the fretboard. I've, got, I've actually cut two pieces from the plank of olive that I've got so I need to choose which one I'm going to use but I'd like to bind it with a darker wood and I think the Avanco is going to make that um, look really nice. So what I need to do is cut a strip from this and make myself some binding from it. I rather like this side 
of the olive. I don't really want this, this sort of different brown colour in though, so what I'm going to do, uh, I've got a bit of snipe there, so I'm going to move it over to there. So I think if I have it over to that side, now this template goes to 24 frets, uh, so I will put do the whole lot, but um, obviously I'm not going to use 24 frets, it's doing 22. Okay, well I've roughly shaped the fretboard and I've planed it down. I've not sanded it yet. It needs to go a little bit narrower because I need to put binding on. But um, I may have mentioned it in the past, if you sand olive, you've got to be really careful because the, the dust is an irritant. And um, I need to have gloves and all my uh, equipment on before I attempt that. Anyway, um, so I've made some good progress. The neck blank is all glued up and I've let it sit for probably about 10 days just to uh, let it get any movement out of its system. But what I'm going to do now is, is thin it down. I want to end up with this part of the neck being about 16 mil thick. But for the time being, I'm probably going to take it down to about 20 mil and just get that nice and flat. And then I'm going to leave it to one side just to settle again. I've got a nice new blade. I'm just going to trim off this veneer. Okay. And uh, I'm going to start off by cutting it down to size on the bandsaw. got to show you this because I'm really chuffed with this uh, I've I've got a really good join between those pieces of wood there and I was worried that I was going to have some gaps now this is going to be on the underside of the neck and uh, well no yeah I'm pleased with that just slightly worried that the thickness may damage the wood so what I'm going to do is use the off cut to just to do a, a test piece first Well, the test piece looks okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, main neck. Well, that was rather fortuitous. I've um, not only just ended up with one neck blank, but I've also got a second one, which is actually 18 mil deep, which is thick enough uh, for another guitar. Uh, this is the one I'm gonna use. It's just uh, 22 mil. I did it a little bit thicker in the end. What I'm gonna do now is just uh, leave these to one side for a few days, just to uh, see what happens to the wood. Now then, Carolyn and I have now come up with a design for the headstock. So let me show you. So here we are. So what we wanted it to do was to re reflect the top of the guitar in this little bit here, but keep it fairly lightweight, not too heavy and not too clumpy. And um, I think this is going to do the job. So what I'm going to do is make a template out of some plywood. Just 
spotted a split in the top of the wood here on the side that I was going to use as the top. Um, but the other side's okay. What I think I'm going to do is switch that round and uh, put the headstock there instead, I think. Okay, I've marked that out again. I'm going to cut that out on the bands. So. Okay, so I've marked out the neck using my template. My template's not accurate, unfortunately. Uh, one side of the line is narrower than the other side of the center line. So what I've done, I've flipped it so that hopefully I've got it right on both sides. Now, before I do anything else, I want to cut the uh, scarf joint angle, which is 10 degrees, which I've marked on, on the side of the neck there. Uh, but before I do that, I'm gonna just flatten this side off with um, a plane so I've got a nice good solid register on the uh, bandsaw table. I'm going to masking tape and super glue this template onto the neck blank. Okay, I'm ready to glue the headstock on. I've got glue, paper towel, got some salt this time, and um, some clamps ready. What I haven't got is any clamping cord. That's that sorted. Okay, so oops, that needs to line up with there. Well the salt helped but these glue up saws a bit of a fiddle. I think I've got it okay now. I had to uh, have a couple of goes at this but it looks okay now. So I'm going to put this to one side and let it cure. I think now's the time to cut some fret slots. Simple jig, here we go. Okay, this is my fret slot cutting jig. What I've got here is a piece of aluminium with holes cut in into it uh, in the, at the right positions for the frets and just a little pin sticking out at the bottom of this that registered is, registers in those holes. So set that up to the nut. I've set the fret saw height to just under three mil. There's one fretboard slotted and ready to go. The head sock's cured overnight, so uh, let's see what we've got.
looks okay, looks quite a nice joint there. So what I've got to do now is bandsaw that across there. The idea here is to trim that reasonably close to the top of the neck blank there, but not too close, just to allow me to have some uh, material to plane away. That appears to be reasonably successful. So now all I need to do is plane that flush. When I work on the neck, I use this jig that I made. If you want to see how I made it, please check out the link that I'll put in the top corner there. Well, that seemed to do the trick. This looks nice and flat. Looks good. Of course, I've also planed off the markings for the neck, so I'm gonna have to put it back with a template, but uh, I've actually treated myself. To a centre finder ruler so it should make life a bit easier. Okay I've scored the shape of the neck on here with a knife what I'm going to do now is take a bit of material off with a bandsaw and then the rest of it probably on the belt sander. But I think I've rambled on enough uh, in this video, so I'm going to call it an end. I know I said at the outset I was going to do the neck from beginning to end, including getting the frets in. But there's a few things that I need to sort out before I go too far. And one of those is how this neck's going to fit into the body. And the body's the next job I'm going to do. So that's in my next video. So I'm going to get that started. And then hopefully my ideas of how these two components are going to connect will come a bit clearer. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, first video in the Great Guitar Build Off 2021 series. Please don't forget to hit subscribe uh, if you like this sort of content and hit the like button and hit the notify icon if you want to be notified when the next videos are coming up. I will just end by saying the music in this video was produced on the autumn guitar, the Use What You've Got Challenge guitar, and uh, really pleased with how that sounds. I hope you enjoyed it. Anyway, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.